What's up YouTube? Tonight's video is all about the PC Engine, which is also known in the US as the TurboGrafx-16. Tonight I'm going to focus on my PC Engine collection, which is a mix of Hue Card uh, cartridge type games, as well as the CD, Super CD based games as well. Um, we will start off, I'll go over a little bit about the console itself, but the focus on this is primarily the games collection. If this video is well received, I will likely do one about my American TurboGrafx collection as well, as because I have about the same number of games for the US TurboGrafx and Turbo CD systems. So, joining me in the video tonight is my number one homie, Parappa the Rapper. And that's all I'm saying about that. Alright, moving on to the console. This is it. This is the size of the console. Can you believe that? Easily one of the smallest sleekest consoles ever produced. I love the size of it myself. It fits anywhere. So the PC Engine itself was launched in 1987 in Japan. It had a much more successful run than the US TurboGrafx and as such the software library for it is tremendously larger. I highly recommend picking up both. Uh, there are some games that are beneficial to have the US versions such as the RPGs and action RPGs. However, you can also find out that the PC Engine versions of many of the games are available for much, much less than the crazy US TurboGrafx prices lately. So, uh, the games themselves, for the most part, come on these little, tiny, thin cards known as Hue Cards. And you can see the Hue Card and some Japanese writing on the back. Um, primarily, Hudson Soft did a lot of the development for the NEC PC Engine, and it was a partnership between Hudson Soft and NEC. So um, let me go ahead and go over all the games I have in my library, but I wanted to show you guys just at least some basics of what the system looks like, as well as these very unique cartridge games. For the CD-based games, I actually play those on my US uh, market Turbo Duo system, and the US Turbo Duo is capable of playing CD games of any region, as well as US-based Hue cards. So you still do need a PC Engine um, system to play the Japanese Hue cards. They are region locked. All right, so you've seen the system, you've seen what the cards look like. Let's go ahead and start covering some games. So in my collection, I have quite a few. Uh, it's not one of my biggest collections, but it's something that I like to pick up games for every once in a while. I'm by no means going for a full PC Engine collection because, as I said, it is a very large library. So, starting off, we have Rastan Saga 2, and I do love the Taito Rastan games. Uh, the very first arcade game is fantastic, as well as Warrior Blade, which is a arcade-exclusive multi-monitor game that uh, is considered Rastan Saga 3. Now, for some reason, Rastan Saga 2 is not very good, and this also came out on the US Sega Genesis as well, uh, if you want to get a cheaper version of it, but also this PC Engine version is pretty cheap. The artwork on it is fantastic. Um, I love the, the you know, Wizards and Warriors classic, um, I don't know, medieval fighting type stuff going on. But uh, the game itself is just not very good. I don't, I think another uh, team at Taito developed it because it really bears no semblance to the original. So, moving on. Uh, that's one of the first times you'll ever hear me critique a Taito game because I pretty much love everything they put out. The next game I have is Arm Def, which is a pretty average shooter. Uh, the PC Engine has a massive shooter library, so there's really no reason to settle for some of the average ones. You can get a uh, library of a lot of great games uh, that, of all the shooters they put out. Some of those that you might be thinking I'm missing on my PC Engine collection, I might also have the US version of, so that's why you won't see those featured here. The next game is one of my favorite PC Engine games, and that is San San 2. Uh, this game was originally a Capcom arcade game, the first game in the San San series. It also was a uh, popular game on the uh, Japanese Famicom. It did not come out for the US. But the sequel is a little bit different. It's much more polished. It's uh, basically a Mario style platformer, and it's fantastic the way that this is done. The artwork in this is incredible and uh, really love the story uh, storyline of the kind of classic uh, monkey hero type boss or uh, main character, excuse me. Uh, one thing you can look for when buying PC Engine games is anytime you see this logo, that is a good thing. Uh, that is essentially NEC's internal team called NEC Avenue and they did a bunch of great 
um, arcade ports for the PC Engine, usually for Sega and Capcom and companies like that. And they generally put a lot of polish on their games. So anything, anytime you see an NEC Avenue game, I highly recommend picking those up. Uh, the next one is Time Cruise 2, and this is a video pinball game. Uh, one of the reasons to own a PC Engine or a Turbo Graphics is the awesome Crush series of pinball games. So there's Alien Crush and Devil Crush. Those are really some of the best video pinball I've ever played. This one, uh, not so much. It's pretty average, and actually it came out after, I think, both of those. So really it has no excuse to be as lame as it is. The first game in the series came out in the U.S., but the second one is uh, Japanese only, so can't really recommend that one. Uh, the next game I have is translates, or basically is Honey on the Road, and this is an action puzzle game by Face. Uh, the claymation cover on it is very cool, and it is uh, it's a pretty solid game. Um, it also is related to the next game I'm going to show you, and that is Honey in the Sky. This one, if you couldn't guess, is a shooter, and again has that awesome claymation artwork on the cover. Um, I prefer Honey in the Sky to Honey in the Road, but uh, they're both kind of worth having. These aren't very expensive games to pick up. The next one is another Taito game, and this is one of my favorites on the PC Engine. This is Hanata Tadaka, or it's also known in the West primarily as Long-Nosed Goblin, or Super Long-Nosed Goblin. Um, again, a very traditional Japanese tale, but it's a shooter. It's a lot of fun. It's very colorful, and I don't believe this was released in the arcade or any other system. So this is one of the Taito games that uh, is not an arcade port for the PC Engine. Most of them are arcade ports for the most part. But highly recommend picking up this game. I love uh, the color in this game, and it's really well done. The next one is uh, one of my all-time favorite games, and that is Galaga 88. Uh, this came out for the U.S. Turbo Graphics as Galaga 90. It's such a great game that I loved it so much. I actually bought the action, the uh, original arcade machine for this this game. So I do have a Galaga 88 arcade machine in my collection. Basically, meaning that this port of it is no longer necessary, but I will say that the conversion of it is rather solid. It's about 90%. Um, it's missing a couple things here and there, but this is a super addictive game. If you love Galaga, you really owe it to yourself to play Galaga 88. I don't know why it wasn't as popular as the original or why people haven't even re recognized it now, um, but Galaga 88 is super addictive and really fun. Um, Pick this up either on the uh, PC Engine, the Turbo Graphics, or one of the recent arcade Namco Museum collections that has the game. Um, none of those are arcade perfect, but close enough. So, yeah, can't give any better advertisement for this game. The next game is one that you can pick up super cheap. This was, I think, one of the best-selling games for the PC Engine. And it is, I, I'm going to probably butcher this, but I believe it's Yuchai Dochuki or something like that. Um, basically just a simple Namco platformer. It's got a kind of, again, a Japanese traditional horror tale uh, background to it. There's a lot of games like that on the PC Engine for some reason. But um, yeah, this one's really cheap to pick up if you just want something simple to play. Nothing too special. The next one I'm going to show you is one of my favorites on the PC Engine as well, and that is Gamola Speed. This is easily one of the best action puzzle games I've ever played. It's very unique, it's a little hard to describe, but essentially you are this giant worm that is made up of segments, and to beat each level, you have to encircle little uh, globes or spheres on the screen. However, there's enemies among the screen that will try to break up the segments of your worm or destroy it entirely. So if you lose segments, you have to go around and pick those up and keep the size of it up. Uh, you can also get power-ups to extend your, the size of your worm as well as other items in the game. But uh, this game is kind of under the radar, even I think for PC Engine collectors, and I don't really know why, because this is a great, unique title. Um, it was developed by UPL, which is a awesome developer of some very unknown and unheralded shooters along the way as well, but uh, definitely like Gamola Speed. The next game I got is Toy Shop Boys, which is a all right shooter, don't really have a whole lot more to say about it. Um, not one of the highlights of the system, but not one of the worst either, so it's kind of mediocre. 
This next game is Bomberman 94, and this, for some reason, was an exclusive for the Japanese PC Engine. Uh, the prior original Bomberman and Bomberman 93 were both released in the U.S., but this one, which is the best of all of them, remained in Japan. I would say of all the Bomberman games I've played, this is number two right behind Saturn Bomberman, but this game has a lot of polish and was a pretty late release for the PC Engine, so you could tell that uh, they definitely learned some graphic tricks with it by, the, by that time. Um, highly recommend this game, and I uh, don't think you'll be disappointed if you're a Bomberman fan. This one's a little bit unique, too. You can tell some of the late PC Engine games because they actually have artwork on the back. Uh, most of them just have that solid sticker that I showed you guys earlier. This next game is a Super CD game, and it is a highly unusual shooter. Uh, this one is known as God Panic. I pulled this out at a game party about three years ago, and of all the crazy, high-hyped, uh, vintage arcade shooters we were playing that night, this was just a random, oh, let's see how this is type of game. And I can tell you that we ended up playing this for about three three hours that night, uh, trying to beat it and loop it and beat the loops as well. It's very addictive. I don't know what it is. It's not graphically that impressive, but it's very interesting. Uh, the other thing that's wacky about this game, other than the very weird art style, is that it has classic, like, classic rock and heavy metal songs that uh, people would know, such as Stairway to Heaven, Totally ripped off, unlicensed, and featured in the game. So, new compositions of classic rock songs uh, to play along with as you're uh, shooting through the weird scenery in this game. Um, it also has this unusual back cover art that has nothing to do with uh, what's going on in the game, really. So, yeah, like I said, God Panic, uh, I don't know, I recommend it just because it's weird. Don't expect a lot out of the graphics, but moving on. Alright, so this next game is... One of the very hyped games for the PC Engine. Uh, it is a Super CD game as well. You won't, won't be able to play it on a, just a PC Engine alone. But it has uh, such a reputation that really no PC Engine collection is complete without owning it. And that, of course, is Castlevania Dracula X, uh, also known as Rondo of Blood, or if you want to go for the full title, but whatever. This game, it lives up to the hype, honestly. It is beautiful. It really pushes, pushes the PC Engine system to its limits. Um, I realize you can get a uh, port of this on the P PSP um, that was released in the U.S., but um, or also the much uh, lesser quality Super Nintendo Dracula X as well. But this is really the one to own. And um, I don't know, it's an experience. It's, it's really amazing what the PC Engine could do. And if you like Castlevania games, this is easily one of the best ones ever released. All right, the next game is Dyson Poo Custom. Uh, the reason I was interested in this one is it is a Toa Plan uh, arcade shooter, who is one of my favorite shooter developers. You can also see it has the NEC Avenue logo down there, because they were the ones that handled the port. However, this is a pretty plain shooter. It moves quite slow. Um, it's not that good. It is actually an enhanced version of one you could get on the uh, Japanese, um, Japanese Sega Mega Drive, but uh, it's, not, it's nothing that special. It's just okay. This next game is Shibuben Man 3. I probably butchered the name of that, but that's okay. Close enough. And it is essentially the PC Engine um, kind of response to Mega Man games. And it's a very fun action game. There were two prior releases in the series, and one of those got a release in the U.S. as Shockman. I believe it was the second PC Engine game that was released as the first game in the U.S. or something like that. However, this is the only one that is a CD-based game, I believe, and uh, this is the one that has the best graphics. Um, it's not a super CD, but it is a, a CD-ROM 2 game, and it has some uh, anime cutscenes as just about all the CD games had at the time. So, I could recommend this game. I think it's pretty good. This next CD-based game is Magicole, and it is a action RPG. Uh, it does have quite a bit of Japanese text, but I can say I probably played about five to six hours worth of this before I got completely stuck with the text. Um, very cool art style. I, I think it's interesting. I wish I knew Japanese to get a little bit farther in it, but uh, I can recommend this game, and again, it goes very cheap. This next shooter is Ray Zanber 2. If you want punishment from a shooter, play this game. Holy crap. 
easily one of the hardest shooters I've ever played. I don't know how else to describe it. Uh, getting through the first level is a major accomplishment. I don't know why the difficulty on this game is cranked up so high, but it's ridiculous. The uh, the graphics in it are quite good. I wish I could play more of the game. I'm just terrible at it. There also is a uh, Ray Zanber 3 for the PC Engine, which I believe is a little bit less difficult, and I'd like to pick that one up as well. This next game is another of my favorites, and that is Gain Ground SX. This is another Super CD-ROM, and it is an enhanced version of the arcade game by Sega. Um, again, look who handled the port. NEC Avenue. Good sign of quality. Uh, this one has CD quality sound and is vastly improved over the Sega Genesis version if you played that one. Um, I really like this game a lot. I mean, Game Ground is just easily one of my all-time favorites. So, highly recommend this. It's an up-scrolling screen uh, kind of action strategy game. It's not very uh, slow-paced or anything like that, like a true strategy game. But uh, very arcadey, good fun, and uh, recommend you try this game. Next one is uh, Moto Rotor 2, and essentially this is like a kind of an RC program for the uh, PC Engine. Uh, the first Moto Rotor game came out in the US, I believe, but this one was uh, Japan only. Uh, maybe I'm wrong about that, but there, I think there's a third one in the series as well, and it's a CD-based game. This one's still a Hue Card-based game, so nothing too special, just uh, kind of whatever. Uh, this one... I am struggling to remember the title of. I think it's like, I don't know, it starts with a G. And I'm uh, Genji Tushin Ajidama, I think, or something like that. I probably completely butchered that. Um, more obscure platformer, but very colorful and a lot of fun. Um, can recommend this one as well. I like it, and I wish I could get the title correct for you. Uh, sometimes they have some American text or English text on the uh, spines, but this one is no help, so... Sorry about that, but uh, yeah, good game regardless. This next one is another CD-based game. It's a Super CD. And if you like single-screen platformers like Bubble Bobble and um, Snow Brothers and things like that, this is a game right up that alley. This one is called Poppin' Magic. Uh, it is not as good as Bubble Bobble or many of those other titles in that type of genre, but it's decent. And again, just to have a unique title like that for your... PC Engine, uh, it's worth picking up. So, I don't think it's that expensive. I haven't checked prices on this one lately, but uh, still worth considering if you can get it at a decent price. This next game was released in the U.S., and it is known in the U.S. as Bravo Man. Um, basically, a Namco superhero character with super long, extendable, stretchy arms he uses to punch and beat up th people and things. Um, haven't really played this that much, but it's a somewhat common game to find in Japan, so therefore this one's pretty cheap to get. This next game is one that I highly recommend. Um, there is a few ninja action games on the PC Engine and Turbo Graphics. Um, one of those that's pretty well known is uh, Ninja Spirit, which is a great IRM game. Um, there also is another one on the PC Engine that um, pretty much everyone goes after, and it's the one that's worth the big bucks. But I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, and I don't know why right now. The point is, I've played that game, and I think it's overhyped. I like this game better. This is Iga Ninden Gao. I believe I said that somewhat right. Uh, this is a game by Nichibutsu who made a lot of great classic arcade games, and it is one of my favorite ninja action games. Um, the style of the graphics of this are not um, fantastic. Uh, the other game I'm thinking of is Kaze Kiri, and that um, this game will not hold up to that game graphically. However, gameplay-wise, I really like this game better than that one. So this is the one I recommend to pick up. This one is a little bit obscure among the PC Engine library, but uh, a great game and a good Super CD game to get. Next we have Rabio Lapis Special, which is a rabbit robot shooter. Um, this was an arcade game, and it's an uh, enhanced port of that. Uh, decent, nothing mind-blowing, and um, pretty cheap to pick up, so just good if you want some cheap shooters. This next one is another Namco shooter, and that is Final Blaster. Not sure if this was an arcade game or developed for the PC Engine, but uh, not one of their best ones. Um, Namco has definitely done better stuff than this, so 
whatever. Again, just if you get it cheap, it's not too bad. This next game is one that is also pretty easy to pick up, and that is Drop Rock Hora Hora, I believe is what it is known as. Um, it is also released in the U.S. as Drop Off, I think. Uh, essentially, it's an Arkanoid type game or uh, breakout type game for the PC Engine. It doesn't use any special controllers or anything like that, but you break the blocks and they turn into fruit. But it also has this weird, like, satanic nightmare type story going on with it, too. Um, they obviously sanitized some of that for the U.S. release, but I think the cover to the Japanese one is very cool. It's a bizarre, very bizarre game. As you can see, you have the evil fruits there on the side um, with this possessed girl or whatever's going on. I don't know. Definitely get this game just because it's cheap and it's super addictive. I've spent hours playing this game and uh, really was surprised at how addicting it is. So good stuff here. This next one, uh, you guys saw the hue card of it earlier, but I do have the uh, complete copy of the case, and that is Super Star Soldier. This is uh, one of the finest Star Soldier series shooters that uh, was released for the system. And um, this one I can say that you can get the PC Engine version considerably cheaper than the US version, so that's why I chose to get that one. It's the same game, so uh, a good way to save money. You know, even if you have a US Turbo Graphics and you decide to pick up a PC Engine, you'll make up the difference uh, based on the prices you save on some of these games. So, like I said, this one's uh, definitely a good one to have in your collection, either in uh, US or Japanese form. Um, running down to about the last three games here, and the next one I'm going to show you is Download. And this was a uh, shooter ported by NEC Avenue. <laughs> and it's okay. Uh, it's not awful or anything like that by any means. I guess the thing that would this game would be known for is the random bursts of cursing in English that it features in some of the cutscenes. Um, we're talking full-on F-word back in the PC Engine days, which is uh, pretty amazing, I guess, for its time. I don't really know if anyone in Japan realized how weird that was, but uh, in America, this game would have obviously never made the cut during that era. So... There also was a uh, Download 2, which was a CD-only based game. I don't have that one yet. But uh, this one's a pretty common shooter, and uh, it's worth get, taking a look, I'd say, at least. Even beyond just the, the random cursing outbursts in it. Uh, this next game is another shooter, and it is Cyber Core. Um, nothing really special here. I don't. E I can't even honestly remember playing it, to be honest with you guys. But um, this one, I guess, whatever. It's one you can pick up cheap. And finally, for the PC Engine, I have Die Hard, which is extremely loosely based on the movie. Uh, this is not the same Die Hard that we got on, say, like the NES in the U.S. It's a completely unique game for the PC Engine. And it was kind of weird because there were several U.S. movies that were turned into unique games on the PC Engine. Uh, there's also one for Batman as well. This one, um, if I remember right, it's an overhead kind of action uh, with a little bit of puzzle elements and it, kind of finding the correct door to go in. Um, I liked it okay at the time, I guess. I don't know. I can't really remember it too well, but this is one I don't think costs too much and uh, definitely a unique entry in the PC Engine library. So uh, hopefully you guys liked my overview of the PC Engine. Um, this is, again, just what my collection consists of today. It's a system that, you know, I, I would like to get more games for in the near future. Um, still don't really have anything that's an absolute must in my collection uh, list that I'm looking for. But if you know of any absolute essentials for the PC Engine library, please feel free to leave, leave me a comment about it. And I'd love to check out some more games on the system because I am uh, awfully fond of it, especially for its very cool design. Um, the other thing about the, the system itself is uh, if you get a PC Engine, it only has an RF output on it. That's it. Uh, there isn't even composite AV in this, but there is a cheap cable you can get to hook to the expansion pack on the back to at least give you a composite output. Uh, as far as future plans, I would like to get this system uh, RGB modded, and um, I plan to do that hopefully pretty soon, but uh, it's certainly a, uh, within the capability of it. It just requires a light modification to the internal board to get an RGB out signal on this. So uh, there are newer versions of the PC Engine, such as the Core Graphics 2, which I believe added the AV cable uh, compatibility more out of the box. However, they don't have the classic white appearance of the original. So this is my favorite system to own of the uh, PC Engine variants. So hopefully you like this overview again of my collection and a little bit about the PC Engine itself. Please take a moment, like, comment, subscribe, let me know what you think. 
And I will uh, have a great day or night wherever you are. And I'll talk to you all soon.